Hey everybody, I just wanted to let you all know that today's video is sponsored by Excruciating Pain! That's right, it's time for Cruelty Squad. We're delving into the real cyberpunk hellscape where dreams are dead, pain is fuel, and your Windows 95 nightmares are full. Cruelty Squad has you playing as some 30-year-old doomer who got fired from his main gig and now has to be the Uber driver of mass murder in the name of the corporate interest. You'll kill pretty much anyone your handler tells you to, no matter how absurd the premise or the job, because you want to fully modify your body with all the disgusting cybernetics so that you can look extra cool when you cry yourself to sleep. Just to let you all know, this one's going to be a quick little video as, while I wasn't initially planning to do it, I had too much fun to not make a video about Cruelty Squad. Well, I guess that turned out to be a complete and utter lie. I'm a little over seven hours deep as I write this, and I've had a ball playing through what levels are already out for this game and can't wait for more. In case you didn't already know, Cruelty Squad is an early access game that became available since early last month, and so far has 13 levels, which I'm not sure if that number does or does not count the secret levels, which there are at least three as I write this, and there's more planned for Cruelty Squad, and just by looking at Consumer Soft Products Twitter, you can see they've got a lot planned. So the first thing you'll notice about Cruelty Squad is that its name isn't just a signal of how you're going to be treating your targets. This game is tough and doesn't care much for easing you into things. Initially, you'll be charged $500 per death as a fee to reconstruct your body, but thankfully, after a certain point, your boss will just be like, yeah, you're dying way too much, so we're gonna stop letting you use the reconstruction machine and apply an experimental treatment to you that makes it nigh impossible for you to die. It's extremely painful, though, and you'll feel like a hollow shell of a person, but that's nothing you aren't used to already. I wasn't even done with the tutorial when this happened, which in hindsight was laughably easy compared to the rest of the game. Even with armor, you'll go down in only a few shots, and while you can't heal yourself, it's very slow going, and unless you want to lose a lot of cash to vending machines, you're going to have a very hard time going from low health to full health. Levels are challenging, enemies will get the drop on you if you aren't careful, and you'll need to be conscious about what you bring into a level if you want to do well. That means you'll also need to grab new weapons in levels if you want to have the variety you need to get by later on. The levels you'll be playing through are very open-ended, and there's no one way to get to your target. No level feels quite the same as the last one, either. You'll start small, going into gated communities, where one of the major threats is that the guy at Pizza House considers you shoot on sight as you aren't a Pizza Pie Premium Rewards member. But you'll work up to crazy stuff like Eldritch Malls, Flesh Coin Cruise Ships, and the Winchester Mystery Police Station. Some of these levels get really, really big, and you might have yourself a time finding your way to the target, or more often, you found an eliminated the target, but now you have to figure out how the hell you're going to get out of this place with what little health you have left. There's lots of vents, hidden passages, and other terrible places to get lost in, but that's okay because you can check the stock market at any time with the tab key to keep your sadness levels high during the lulls in contract killing by watching your retirement funds evaporate in real time. There's lots of offshoots and entirely optional areas in most of the levels too. Places like these will usually be pretty tough, but there's a high likelihood that they'll have hidden implant abilities somewhere in them, or they can even end up being a very nice vantage point to take out a target if you're lucky. Exploring the map can be a lot of fun, and I ended up just wandering around to see what I could find between my attempts at taking out targets, since it was pretty cool to just see what there is to see, and often you'll find an alternate path to the target that you can take instead of trying to take the clear-cut path with a bunch of bad dudes in your way. You get a pretty good selection of weapons in Cruelty Squad that's growing by the patch. You'll start out with Baby's First Silence Pistol and an SMG, which while they never become you, useless, you'll find a lot of stuff that's a lot better than them quickly, especially if you're willing to explore a lot in the earlier levels. These range from shotguns that have skipped pellets and slugs altogether and instead opt to fire five flechettes the size of fountain pens per shell, and LMGs that fire depleted uranium slugs with alarmingly good recoil control. Some of these guns get pretty wild, and while no gun is truly useless or outpaced by another, but you might run into the problem that is not being able to find ammo for your cool guns on later levels where the baddies are using different guns, and you'll be forced to swap weapons later on in the mission so that you have something to shoot. The two in-game solutions to this are an equipable ammo bandolier that gives you one extra magazine per weapon, which can be a lot if you're bringing a high capacity item like an LMG, or to implant an ammo gland into your body that will allow you to literally grow more bullets for your gun out of your own body. However, you won't be able to reload the old-fashioned way and might find yourself stuck waiting for bullets to regrow before taking on more dudes. Oh, and before I forget, 
bit, reloading in Cruelty Squad is done in a bit more of an unorthodox method, in the form of holding right click and moving the mouse down and then up as if to simulate the removal and replacement of a magazine, which is gonna trip you up at first, but by the third or fourth level it'll be second nature. Outside of your choice in weapons is a choice in implants for your body. This isn't glitzy, fancy body mods like Cyberpunk 2077 or Deus Ex. They're all disgusting and make you feel like less of a human when you equip them. Instead of a cool noise like a whirring drill or a cool metal sound, it instead plays a sad sigh when you equip a body mod, and all of them are just disgusting. Take your double jump for instance. Rather than some sort of fancy jet system in your legs, it takes the form of holes in your feet that shoot out excess waste to give you an extra boost midair at the cost of leaving a disgusting mess wherever you go. Sure, that double jump is handy, but how good about yourself do you feel leaving a trail of doo-doo snot wherever you go? Then there's all sorts of body horror upgrades like scooping out parts of your brain to house a face gun, a suit of writhing flesh armor, an intestinal grappling hook, and the nightmare vision goggles that show everything the same as it usually is, just slightly more red than before. Then you've got the real reason we're here, kicking things into space. The kick in Cruelty Squad is the best thing since Dark Messiah's kicking mechanic because it takes it up to 11. You don't kick doors open in Cruelty Squad. You annihilate their very existence with your foot. You kick dudes with enough force to where you can easily send them into the skybox with the right positioning. And you can kick a dude so hard that you will send him flying into another dude with enough force to kill both people. Your kick could also be upgraded to skip the flying about entirely and you just insta-jib the victim, but then you won't be able to consume the dead person's flesh for health. That's right, you do cannibalism to restore health during a level. And while it only restores one health per body consumed, it'll add up over the course of a level to be probably just enough for you to take like another shot before the end of the map, which can be the difference between winning and losing. There's other ways to heal yourself, such as spending your life savings at a vending machine or getting grill pilled in one of the earlier levels, but you'll find that eating corpses is the most consistent way to keep your health up when you're deep into the Eldritch Mall and you can't find the vendor. So let's get a little deeper into the despair that is the story. So like I said earlier, you work as a member of the Cruelty Squad, a subsidiary of another company that manages assassins on a per contract basis. So yeah, basically an Uber driver for murder. This game starts out with the protagonist moping in the shower before his handler calls him to mock him for being a screw up and then corporate negging him into a job with the Cruelty Squad. It's just, uh, take a look at it for yourself. And that's pretty much it. There's a bit more world building here and there that you'll get from playing missions, but at the time of writing this, the story is basically just kill dudes, get money, get better things to kill dudes with. Then let's talk about what's been burning the cones of your eyes out since you clicked on this video. The aesthetic. Cruelty Squad looks like what hell must look like if it still runs on Windows 95. There's no shading or soft colors, just pure, unfiltered hell that makes every room a jarring experience so that you may understand the pain of this world. Textures are sometimes just stretch words and MS Paint plastered across the walls, and it's somehow both minimalism and overstimulation at the same time. Everything is unsettling and gives off that creepypasta game from the early 2010s vibe. NPCs talk to you like you'd expect your villagers in Animal Crossing Wild World to talk after 15 years of your absence, and they've gotten to the point where they just pour out the whole bottle of soda and fill the thing up with Captain. And as they've got nothing else to look forward to now that you're not coming back. Then there's that world building. You learn most of what you learn about the world of Cruelty Squad through the flavor text of missions and occasionally talking to dudes. This stuff is almost like a morbid Douglas Adams in its absurdity. Like how you don't raid the police station, you raid the cult of law enforcement because the corporate planted police chief took too many steroids and went insane as he turned into a flesh cube. Or how one of your missions involves you taking out the head of an interplanetary colonization effort because the guy in charge doesn't realize that he's supposed to be making the spaceships more dangerous because these colonization efforts aren't actually colonization efforts, but instead a means to sacrifice human lives to the corporate arch demons, one of whom you'll be working for when you massacre a casino that they lost their bonus in the other night. 
there are some pretty dark forces at work here, but you don't have time to worry about that since if you're late on rent, the very cruelty squad that you work for will kick down your door and kill you dead. I'm gonna go out on a pretty sturdy limb here and say that Cruelty Squad is a far more cyberpunk experience than Cyberpunk 2077, which if you scrutinize the latter, you'll find that in spite of bringing on the creator of cyberpunk, Mike Pondsmith, Cyberpunk 2077 isn't all that cyberpunk to begin with, aside from some pretty, like, bio mods. If I had to do a comparison, it's kind of like how the Star Wars prequel series loses that used future aesthetic that made the original trilogy look so cool, and the movies are kind of lame when everything is glitzy and fresh looking. Cyberpunk 2077 feels more like they just made a fanciful futuristic game where you just so happen to play as a criminal, and then when they realized that this wasn't very dystopian, they just put a crap load of trash bags everywhere. Like hell, the supposedly hanging by a thread group of road raiders seems less like a Mad Max setup than you might expect them to be, and they look more like the rich kids who go ride their shiny new KTM dirt bikes that they pay other people to work on over at the LA lake bed, and of course they bring a giant toy hauler with them because they're too good to put their bikes in the back of the truck like everyone else. But we're getting a bit sidetracked here. Cruelty Squad excels at cyberpunk, as while the world is filled with technological advancement, everything is now terrible because of it, and the overall quality of life is dirt poor. Rather than some sort of fancy, over-romanticized rebel story, instead we got a world where you just go with the flow and hope that the powers that be don't decide they don't like you anymore, because if that happens, there's nothing you can really do about it. The best example of this is one mission where the Cruelty Squad does indeed raid your apartment to kill you dead, and you need to make an escape. Your job provider is cursing you out at the beginning of the mission and saying that you've gone too far this time, however, they don't exactly say what you did. Your only target for this mission is your landlord, and then you need to book it out of the building. You'd think this would be a start of a chain of overdone revenge missions where you figure out who put out the burn notice on you and you take down the whole company like some sort of hero, but nope, not in Cruelty Squad. Instead, the very next mission, your handler's like, oh yeah, uh, sorry about the other day, someone in accounting filled out a form wrong and we accidentally went after you instead of hiring you to kill a dude. Anyway, here's your mission for today. And then you keep going without ever bringing up this incident again because you live to suffer and you'll like it. All right, everyone, I know it's been a while, so I think we're long overdue for an anti-sponsor. For those of you that are new to this channel, this is a segment where I lampoon one of the many terrible endorsement offers I receive on my YouTube channel and then shamelessly shill for my Patreon. Today's anti-sponsor is one of the many dudes who are in my inbox and Discord DMs trying to get me to take crappy mobile game endorsement deals. Before any one of them tries to blow me up and tell me how unprofessional this is to trash them, I'm not naming names here, partly because there are at least four of you that do the exact same pattern of terrible behavior and I've muted all of you on Discord anyway. Who am I kidding? These tools don't actually watch my videos. They just peep my analytics and see me as nothing but a fat sales commission. Anyway, this dude probably represents something or other digital marketing solutions for shitters who'd rather allocate their capital getting influencers to shill for their game rather than putting resources into crazy experimental business strategies such as allocating their time and money into actually making their product good so that it will organically attract users. This conversation started how they always do with an ad rep emailing me asking me if I wanted to get in on a big campaign. I say I'm interested and we pass numbers back and forth, but oh no, what do you know? The client isn't interested anymore, but they'll add me on Discord so they can keep in touch with me about upcoming deals. And from then on, it's nothing but DMing me about if I want to cover a crappy mobile game. Part of me has this tinfoil hat theory that with some of these firms, the big name brand deal never existed, but instead was a means to entice creators into letting the ad reps get into your circle as every time one of these types pitches it to me, it always falls through at the last minute for no discernible reason, and then they ask to be added on Discord where they pelt me with shitty freemium games. The times I've actually dealt with big name sponsors are entirely unlike how these dudes operate, and I only thought about this because there's this one brand deal service that keeps cold emailing me with the opportunity to take a brand deal that I'd totally be willing to pass off to you guys, but then when I go there to the site, sometimes within 30 minutes of the emails being sent out to me, said deal is nowhere to be found and instead it's nothing but poorly translated mobile games as far as the eye can see. Part of me thinks this could be the case with these types of dudes and they bank on the fact that the marks they approach won't ever talk about it because they don't want to miss out on this big brand deal that probably doesn't exist in the first place. The final straw for this guy in particular that brought up 
up this anti-sponsor is that after I passed up the umpteenth mobile game deal that paid way less than my asking price, he straight up told me, dude, it'll be so easy for you. The footage is pre-provided, so you don't even have to actually play the game. To which it took me all my willpower not to type in reply to such a statement, Motherfucker, you want me to show for what now was not even so much as touching the subject matter? But instead, I opted for the more polite option of just muting this dirtbag. I reject terrible offers like this one because I choose to operate patreon.com slash charlatanwonder, where you can get early access to videos, 4K cat clips, updates on upcoming videos, and the chance to vote on which video I do next for less than the price of a grocery store loaf of garlic bread. If you can't or won't, that's totally cool. I'll still make these videos as best I can, as fast as I can. And if Patreon isn't your thing, I'm also partnered with the Humble Store, where if you choose, you can follow my link and a portion of your purchases will go to support the channel at no extra cost to you. Now let's get back to Cruelty Squad. So let's touch on something that might be a deal maker for some of you, but a deal breaker for others. Cruelty Squad is an early access game. Now, like I said before, the game launched early last month, and if I had to call it, Cruelty Squad is definitely in the camp of putting out something that would be a functional game already and using community feedback to add more stuff to the game as they finish it up, rather than the category that gives early access its bad reputation and the form of releasing a skeleton of a game as version 0.00.1, asking for 20 freedom bucks, and then forgetting about the project three years from now. All that being said, there are a few hiccups here and there, like how the music in the first level was a little too deep fried, or how currently you need to remember to re-equip everything when you start the game up, or else you'll accidentally go into levels with a starter weapon and no body mods. Consumer soft products seems to be working pretty quickly to bug squash, and from my experience, the game is already pretty good as it is, and it only gets better from here. I will say, however, that I'm bummed out about how consumer soft products fix some stuff like making fall damage be based on distance fallen instead of impact speed, so I can't exploit the double jump anymore to skip levels. According to the store page, the first thing that's getting added are more levels and general polish. Like I said earlier, Consumer Soft Products seems to be pretty good at bug squashing and their earlier dev posts say that they were shooting for 15 levels plus secrets and we're presently at 13, I think. I don't know how many levels are going to be in the final game, but it's definitely going to be more than there is already, and Consumer Soft Products is also polishing up the levels to add more stuff to them. So you'll have more of a reason to replay levels on top of being able to go back with better gear and seeing what kind of secrets you can find. Lastly, they also say that the price of the game isn't going to change from now to launch in approximately six months, so if you're interested in this, there's no reason to wait till launch day. One example of something that got added recently as a feature was the Stonk Market. While seemingly a joke based on the Reddit GameStop run, Cruelty Squad features a full-blown stock market for you to invest your money into, which ends up being a legitimate way to gain money for higher-end implants in the long run as your money grows with the stock market. It's not all bullishness and dividends, however, and you might want to check your investments before going into certain missions, as it's highly likely that massacring the entire executive board of a company is going to flatline the company's share price, and anything you might have invested in it is going to disappear. You can also access the market at any time in mission in case you weren't feeling depressed enough about life already. If that wasn't enough high-risk trading for you, you can also sell the brains and livers of people you jibbed on the commodities market, giving you more reason to murder the life out of everyone you come across in order to fund your Bunko Pop obsession. Then there's all the stuff that isn't necessarily a rework of an existing level or an entirely new level, but are new mechanics that can be applied to all the levels. So far, we've seen via Twitter that Consumer Soft Products is working on drivable cars, a day and night cycle, and a fishing minigame where you can sell your catch on the stock market for extra pain bucks. Based on these things, I have no idea what else Consumer Soft Products might add, but I'm excited for whatever Ultra Curse mechanics they might inflict upon us in the name of pain. Lastly, I'd be missed if I didn't mention the off-the-wall soundtrack that completes the pain simulation experience. Cruelty Squad has a soundtrack that I could best describe as deep-fried Super Nintendo hell that is somehow catchy enough to hurt you, but still be an enjoyable experience at the same time. They just recently released the soundtrack as a standalone purchase too if you're super into it. So, like I said before, I wasn't planning on this video, but I had such a nice time playing Cruelty Squad that I was able to have a pretty easy time making my experiences into 
into a video. If you're into things that people will argue about if they're an immersive sim or not, and you want an experience that brings you high octane sadness as you murder your way through a megacorp just to feel something, then Cruelty Squad is the game for you. I give Cruelty Squad a recommendation here as it's a nice break from cutscene heavy mega plot games that get you right into the action while still being deep enough to remain engaging throughout. So if you want to help out with making these videos while sticking it to crappy mobile game sponsors, all while getting early access to videos, 4K cat clips, insider looks at videos, and the chance to vote on what videos come next, head over to patreon.com slash charlatanwonder. Special thank you and shout out to $10 patrons, Bam Bam Toxico, Carl with a K, Chili Moon Buns, Danger Guy, Destitute, Douglas Black, Forbidden Snack, French Toast, Nice Shorts, Jason Green, John Carlson, McLuffers, Niles D, Elisa Nera, Paul Paul D, Richard H, Sling Jing, Sisyphean, Soviet D, Turtle, Technica, Torhakon, Yannick Z, Dead Negator, Epic Fail, and Spectate. Up next, I've got a video for you that was the Valheim before Valheim, and eventually we'll get into more M-Sims when I get out of these goddamn ventilation shafts. In the meantime, stay safe, stay indoors, wash your hands, wear your mask, and practice social distancing when you need to go out and enjoy this cat video. Chonkerton, are you inspecting the gift I have laid out for mommy on Valentine's Day? Are you just seeing all these smooth surfaces you can rub your paws against? Well, don't. I spent a while trying to get this all organized. And... Mommy should be back any minute now, because her extra lab time should be over. Are you just going to sit here and pose? I already got some good pictures of you in the comic books. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. They're missing a few, like I had to order six and two came in. Because I guess it appears that number two of both series is uh, needing a reprint. And then there's just another couple books just like they didn't have at the Barnes & Noble. Saucy Boy and I are trying to use Barnes & Noble more. Because we know Amazon's kind of a bad place. But when they actually hired the actual Pinkertons, it's like, yeah, maybe we should stop. But Wobbly Boy, this is not your treasure. This is for mommy. Yes? Would you like a scritch? A scritchy scritch? A pet, perhaps? No, don't step on them. Do not, do not, do not. I got them laid out all nice. There you go. Sit in the chair. Pretend you're people. <laughs> 